I'm coming in hot, Chichi. What's up, brother? Let's go. Big day. Big day in sports. We're finally getting a baseball game because it rained yesterday. Yes. Uh, we got the NFL oh. trade deadline today. But yes, let's... you got a, you got a big show for the 33rd team, don't you? Oh, oh yeah, 3:45 Eastern live live stream for the trade deadline. My first live football show on the site. I'm a little nervous. And who's, who's, who are the guys that are on it? Oh, my God. We got, like, Bill Polian's on there, Matt Castle, uh, Rick Spielman. It's nice. going to be good. And plus, we got a whole nice, dude. We got our whole betting and fantasy guys sitting in the corner, too, waiting in case you need, a, right. wait, need some wait tips. To pounce. Yeah, waiting to pounce. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, That's at the end great. of this, I'm going to tell you, I got offered a trade in this one fantasy league. It'll be a good setup for tomorrow's Lambuski show. But we'll do that later. Yeah. Let's All right. let's cool. start with the big story. Cool. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you how this came how this came into my attention. I was talking with somebody who actually used to be a pretty big time programmer of Major League Baseball and scheduler or whatever, and they were like, "Wait, the game got rained out tonight." Yes. Okay. Wait a minute. Are they playing on Thursday? And the answer was yes. Now, dude, how about this? We haven't talked about this yet. I haven't told you this right. that I was going to tee right. you up on this. So Thursday night, it's Astros. At Phillies game four, right? 8.05 start. Also, Thursday night is, where is it? Uh, Philadelphia Eagles at the Houston Texans at 8.15, dude. Oh, bro. Your football team and your baseball team are playing on the same night. Do you, are you excited about that if you're an Astros or Phillies or... Eagles and Texans yeah, fans. Yeah, you're excited. It's the ultimate dopamine rush. You're like, <laughs> you got one TV on over here, one TV on over here. Yeah. You're going back and forth. You might be at, you know, BW3s having some wings with your buddies. Yes. Checking out, the, you know, both games. Oh, so, you got to go to a bar yeah, for that. I'd, I'd be fired up for that, dude. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I think if you're in one of those towns, you got to go. That's a night. Normally, you stay home, but that's a good night to go to a bar because it's that's all good, out there. Yeah, that's you a get, good night to go out. Exactly. It really exactly. is. Totally. that's. I mean that's the perfect storm. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's ever possibly happened in the history of NFL baseball together. Horrible. It's horrible for MLB ratings. Like when I say horrible, it's like epically horrible. Just from like a right. production standpoint, like you're gonna. Well, the MLB MLB ratings are probably already mad that the Yankees aren't in it. You know what I mean? They're like, we are. We, we got the Astros and the Phillies, mm -hmm. and now we got you know we got conflicts with Thursday Night Baseball. So, yeah, yeah. exactly. So Fox is like, what the heck? I know. So that's a fun. That's I, I'm looking forward to it. Wait, were you ever at a game? I was at a I think a Yankees game where the Giants or Jets were close to being in the playoffs one year, and in between innings they were putting up. They were putting up the live feed of like the yeah, Giants yeah. game and Jets game. Did, did that ever happen when you were playing? Were there That's ever cool. big Cincy things? Uh, I'm trying to think. Not really. Uh -huh. When I was there, the Bengals were terrible. We were terrible, and the Bengals oh were terrible. Oh my god! It was really? Like freaking. Yeah, it was like who was the best good, player on well, the Bengals? The, the, the Bengals. Corey Dillon. Oh, he was great. Corey when he was, oh my god! But also, like dude, they, they, they weren't. They weren't that bad. Carson Palmer was there. They were pretty mm. good. Dude, for, how about this? I mean, it just jarred my memory. I come in after a, a bat at bat one time. I punch out. I came in like 2003. The new, it was the new stadium. So mm. it was 2003 or four. I come in. I, I'm just, I come down the steps and I like, I don't know what I did. I think I might have taken a garbage can and tossed it. And I probably said some words I shouldn't have said. And I literally throw the garbage can and I throw it right by these two people. And I look up, it's Carson Poor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wing this. I, I, I can't remember. I threw something. And, and one of the guys for the Reds was like, oh, yeah, Case, I just want to inter, uh, introduce our first-round pick, Carson Palmer. No. We just drafted him. Like, hey, what's up, dude? I, <laughs> like, what's up, dude? Nice to meet you. I was like, I just punched out on three pitches. You know, oh, my God. And, uh, with two guys two guys on. I, I apologize. But, you know, dude, congrats for being there. And he was a star at USC, so I obviously knew who he was. Yeah, so was and like, he was a superstar. I mean, he was a great quarterback. By the way, this is very yeah. random. We requested Carson Palmer to come on with us this Sunday on, on the 33rd team. I'm going to oh, no. fucking ask him if he remembers. <laughs> Remembers that? Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. I just, I just, I don't know exactly. I can't remember if it was a garbage can, but I definitely snapped in front of Carson Palmer. He was standing right I'm there. I'm sure he like, had to remember that. If he I was wasn't like, a hey, pro man, yet. my bad. You know, nice to meet you. I, just, I was like, <laughs> but when you punch out on three pitches with two guys on base, you know, you just yeah. come in and you don't really don't care who's in the area. Yeah, you pull a Paul, <laughs> throw a Paul O'Neill. Luckily, I was in the tunnel. Yeah, I was in the tunnel. It was right by the batting cage. Oh, oh my god, god. so All funny. Right. So from an X's and O's standpoint, uh, yeah. rain out. Who has the advantage? Let's start with that question. 
Well, I think I think the Phillies do, right? I mean, I think it, it allows them to line up their pitching in a more favorable way. They get they get Ranger Suarez back to game three. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Nola lines up at game four now. And then you could either have Syndergaard or Kyle Gibson in game five. And then, you, then you're back to Wheeler. Mm. So I think it lines up better for the Phillies having this one extra day. You know what I mean? More I, I advantageous think, for them. Okay. More advantageous. And, yeah. and you know, obviously they're, they're pen too. I think they've had to go to the pen a little more than Dusty has. Right. But uh, I think it lines up for that with Ranger Suarez now being able to go game three. You push back Syndergaard to, or Gibson to five. And then you've got Nola sitting at four. So you're trying to get, you know, those games ahead so that, you know, you can, you can uh, get back to, get back to, uh, like you know, that. you don't want to go back to Houston, you know, being no. down. No, you don't. And as we said yesterday, was it 79, 69% of the teams that win game three win the World Series. Yeah. So we we got incredible. that pressure on That's there. incredible. And now, That's I want to do what we did a couple of days ago. I had fun asking you this question when I yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us inside the mind of the player yeah. of the day of the World Series. Yeah, you have this experience that these guys are all going through as well. Take us through the mind of waking up in the morning, charged <laughs> up. You're in the middle of the World Series, and then wait, such a buzzkill! Such a buzzkill! I remember. I want to say it was game three or game four. I'm pretty sure it was game three. Going, we were going to St. Louis. We were 1-1 one, one in 2006 World Series. We pull up. You know, I think we're going to get there. At least we're going to take some BP in the cages and stuff because it's raining all day. But, you know, you know. And when you're a big leaguer, Chinch, you're basically a weatherman, too. You mm-hmm. become a weatherman. You, you you know the radar. You know the freaking, you know, east, yeah, west, south. Right? Here comes the, you know, here the, go, here's the windows. Window the windows. The, window, <laughs> yeah. the old window is such BS. <laughs> you know, the windows coming in. You got the, the red rain, the freaking green rain, the yellow rain. The, the, is it going to be light <laughs> yeah. rain? You know, it's yes. like, what a pain in the ass <laughs> this, 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 these these freaking weather things are. But, you yeah. know, I remember that game. I think uh, we, we, we got rained out. And, uh, you know, dude, it sucks because you want to play. You want to play. And especially they had a day off and then we're going to play. So now it's two days off. You know, baseball players want to play. They want to, they're like, they're like different animals than any other sport because they play every night and they want to play every night because it's just a rhythm thing, a timing, and they want to keep going. You want to play the game. So I remember one of the cool stories, dude. Like, so game three was banged. I think it was game three or game four. I can't remember. But anyways, anyway. The, um, I was locked in at the time. I was so locked in at the time. And one of the things I was locked in on, Andy Van Slyke and Don Slott and I would do this. Um, would, first off, Andy Van Slyke was Jack. He'd take his shirt off. I'm like, wow, Andy. I'm like, you're the most <laughs> Jack guy in the frick clubhouse. <laughs> you know, and, he's, and, and Van Slyke, when he played, still had a cannon, right? So yeah. he was in great shape. And, and one of the drills we did was I'd get, it, I'd get in the batter's box and, and Van, Slyke would, Van Slyke would get like, you know, he would get like uh, – batting practice pitching away in the cages bro he would throw it as hard as he could to me i swear to god it must have been 100 some miles an hour right so it was our routine we got this routine going i believe that's really why i got locked in those last couple weeks we got that going right right before the season ended and and the whole drill was yes 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 you're swinging yes 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 till your eyes tell you no Right. And it's like it just taking away the fear of hitting. Right. You always you, you want to when you get in that batter's box, there's always a little uneasiness. But you have to, like, talk to yourself in a way like, OK, the fear is there, but I'm going to, you know, you know what they say? Courage is is not the absence of fear. It's having fear, but like doing it anyway. Yeah. So that mentality of yes, yes, yes. And when Van Slyke's throw me 100 miles an hour in the cages, it was such a great drill. And what I would do is it really helped me take balls too. like, oh, no, I don't want that. But yes, I'm going. And bam, if my eyes tell me no, I'm going to take it. So, dude, it got me locked in. So what happened was, I remember going up to Andy. I'm like, Andy, we got to keep the routine going, bro. Like, I know we just hit, like, team BP and stuff like that. So he's like, all right, Casey. He's like, when everyone leaves, you and I will take a cab back, but let's go to the cages. So everyone leaves, and Vance Slyke and I hang around. And, uh, and, and we went, me, him, and Don Slott went into the cages. We're the only ones there in St. Louis. I think everybody had left. And, bro, Vance Slyke is hot pumping me 100 miles 100 miles an hour you know he's so close and i'm hitting rocket 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 i'm like man this is incredible i'm so grateful that but dude i go into like all of a sudden 14 year old sean casey comes out in me bro yeah. I, you know how you have those moments where you're just so appreciative we have those moments where we'll say dude change i'm so appreciative yeah. you work so hard and so glad we're doing this together you, you know i might you tell your dad that you might tell your mom that you might tell your your friends that your your sister whatever blah 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 dude i had this moment i'm raking with van slyke i'm locked in and dude, I literally, I, 
I, I stopped and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I, and I walked up to him and I go, Andy, I know this sounds ridiculous. This is my ninth year in the big leagues. I've had a lot of success. You've had a lot of success. But I can't believe in my 14-year-old brain as I'm sitting here that my hero, Andy Van Slyke, from the 1990 Pittsburgh Pirates, 91, 92, 93, you, got, you were my hero. I can't believe that you're taking the time right now to blow, throw the ball as hard as you can, to blow it out. And to, for me, wow. like, this is just a surreal moment. And he's like, Bro, I appreciate it. He's like, get back, you know, get back in the box. I'm like, listen, no, I'm not getting back in the box. I was like, and I just wanted him to know, like, I, it was so cool, such a cool moment that, like, Andy Van Slyke was, like, my one of my heroes growing up in Pittsburgh. He's now in the Detroit Tigers staff. He takes his time every day to throw as hard as he can to me with this drill to get me locked in for the World Series and the end of the season. And I just was so grateful, dude. dude. I was so freaking grateful. And, that, and the moment happened the, on the day of the rainout in the world series in 2006 where it was just me and him and Donnie slot hitting in the cages. And we were there, you know, we would hit for 45 minutes, dude, sweating, pouring sweat and just making sure that the, the rhythm and the timing was wow. right in the, you know, and, the, and it, it was all, it was all good. So I, I just, that's the story I think about dude, when I think of game three getting rained do, out. Do you know what was like the image that was in my head? Like while you were telling that story just now, I was like, like the end of the let, like the last, like the last training session Rocky had with a uh, Mick, Right before he's about to go fight Apollo, and it's like, it's like the oh, yeah. uh, they're in the uh, they're in the ring in like an empty dark uh, <laughs> dark boxing thing, and it, it just like Mick puts his hand on Rocky's shoulder. That's what it felt like to me just now. Yeah, you're like yeah, he's you're like, Rocky and I he's Mick. Mick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> incredible dude. Nice. Oh, it that's was a great incredible. story. And, I, and and like dude, there there were so many times too during that series. You know, Andy and I would be in the dugout, just be like, "Let's go, bro. It's working. It's working." That is crazy, know? man. Incredible. I felt yeah, when that, you know, look, I look back, I, le I led the postseason in hitting that year. I think at four, four ten or four, I think like I, like four twenty in the whole postseason, five twenty nine a series. I literally attribute to that drill Vance like would and I would do in the cages where he would throw it as hard as he could, and I would just say yes, 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 I'm going. Wow. And then if my eyes told me no, so then I'd get in there and face like Chris Carpenter and Jeff Weaver, and I'm like, bro, that's wow. not as hard as Andy Vance Slyke's throwing in pregame. <laughs> you know I mean? There you go, yeah. <laughs> It's like a weighted He's bat. You take the weight harder. off your bat. That's just like the same yeah. concept there. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. And then one other story of that day, all the all our families were in my, you know, my my um, father in law at the time, um, my, my and my dad. And my dad's a big jazz blues guy, and mm. so is my father in law, big John Kenka. You know, knows more music than any human alive. Yeah. You know what I mean, so he 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 can go to any genre. So we all got together. And uh, we went to we went to a blues bar in St. Louis. What, dude? It was awesome. Wait, did people recognize you and like talk shit or not really? No, no, no one recognized okay. me. Not in the not in the blues bar we went to. It was like <laughs> legit blues. <laughs> oh, bar. cool. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was like they, you know they were up there playing the blues and nice. And you know, like I said, John and my dad and were shit. loving it. I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah. It was great, dude. It was really really cool. So those are the two memories I have of that rainout. Wow. You know. Oh uh, wait, I got a quick yeah. rainout story. Was it, wait, was it the same year? Wait, you didn't start that, you didn't, you, you guys didn't start that game, right? The, the one that got no, rained no, up? Okay. We didn't, no, we didn't start it. So it remember, banged. okay, so this must have been like 2010, 11, whenever it was Yankee at, at Yankee Stadium, okay, uh, Tigers, Yankees, I believe Scherzer or Verlander was starting, it was a year, Tigers boat raced the Yankees that year, but we're sitting there in the bullpen at, at the network, and it went into this big, it went into this delay. And so they're sitting there and the delay is going for 45, 55, an hour. Wait, 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 time, time out, time out, time out, time out. Yeah. Did you say Yankees, Tigers? Yankees, Tigers, AL, sorry, this was an ALCS, I believe. What, were you on that okay. team? Oh, oh, wait, was that 2006? Yeah. A, no, it, it was, couldn't have yeah, been 06 because the network didn't start till 09. So I was sitting in a bullpen. Okay, okay. No, yeah, no yeah, you yeah, were okay. gone. But, but we, did, we did have a delay in that when we played the Yankees first round, oh. ALDS in 06. Game two was banged in New York, and we had to yeah, play no. game. We played we played game two as a day game the Oof, next day. Yuck. Um, all right. Yeah. No. No. So so we're sitting myself and uh, the other CP and like all the producers. We're waiting, and of course, like at MLB Network, you come on right after the game as soon as you can legally. You know, sometimes yeah. Fox has their like things. You got to wait a sec. But so we're sitting there in a bullpen. It's been like an hour, and they're thinking it's going to play whenever. They don't know. It stops raining, and all of a sudden they go. Uh, 
you know, and they, they threw to like a, a X Factor or American Idol or something as like plug and play right. while the delay was going on. And so we're like watching X Factor, you know, like watching the show, <laughs> these singers. And all of a sudden they come out and they're like, all right, we got a quick update. Let's send it down to uh, to Tom Verducci, who's with uh, Joe Torre, who at the time was like, I don't know, rules committee, committee something. He was an executive. Oh, yeah, 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 yep. Oh, uh, Joe, what's going on? He goes to Joe, he goes, uh, we're banging a game. They're going to play it tomorrow, whatever. Phone rings, bat phone, Tony Petiti. Why aren't you guys on yet? And we were like, what? On yet? Wait, what? We had nothing. Oh we had nothing. The game, I think they played like two innings of the game. So we had nothing. Right. Think about, Sean, you go and do your hour post game show of like when you're right. planning on like, okay, I'm going to, you know, Casey's going to break, you know, Pedro's going to break down uh, uh, how Scherzer did. Uh, Casey's right. looking at, uh, you know, Sheffield versus uh, this guy on a mound, right. blah, 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 and you're all grinding. Nothing. We had nothing. And then we run into the control room, run into the studio. You've had to do that before, like on breaking news, oh, yeah. where you just run in, oh, yeah. you haven't even combed your hair, you yeah. put your earpiece in, maybe get your up, so and, then bam, yeah. and then you're live on national television. Dude, we ran in there. We had to do like two and a half hours because we had to figure out what our show was going to be. We had like, I'm calling Ken Rosenthal like live during the show, being like, we need John. <laughs> we need to fill some time. We got a five segment show. Oh. That was a worse. So whenever talk, I hear about ringing, talking about having ha, having to pivot, right? <laughs> oh, my oh my god, talk about having to pivot. Oh, long dude, night. I remember one time I, I that, that you say that I, I ran in one time to do a, a interview with Justin Masterson. Remember pitcher for the Indians? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ran in. They're like, dude, can you do a uh, quick interview with with Masterson with Hazel May on that? You know, this is uh -huh. early MLB Network. I go, yeah, 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 no problem. So I run in there, boom, get my earpiece in. Well. I can't hear, you know, I can't hear Masterson talking. I think Hazel. I remember this. And I, I turned to like, I turned and Oh, you in the turned. camera while we I'm were like, on the air. Bro, <laughs> I like, remember this. Can't hear I was doing that <laughs> And then Deaver comes on. Like, like, hey, just... hey. <laughs> he's like, hey, we're live. I'm like, oh, God, we're live. <laughs> and I was, I was yelling, doing that show with you. <laughs> the earpiece doesn't work. <laughs> Oh my I'm like, god! Live TV, live TV will bring out all the warts. You know what I mean? Which is good. Yeah. It's good. It's it's yeah. it's it's not always. It perfect, was tough you know? in those it's beginning years at the network because we were oh we, we, we didn't come on live, quote unquote, until six six p.m. Yeah. Eastern when we first started the network. Until like, you know, yeah. until we started getting the rundown in there and Yalf and all those guys doing all their shows during the day and all the morning shows. So that would be the worst thing. You would just be sitting there. And all of a sudden, they'd be like, oh, hey, uh, A-Rod just got busted for steroids. And you're like, and it'd be like 2.30 in the afternoon. You'd be like, None, Chinch, you, know, you, you have to know this story. What's that? My first show ever, MLB Network, was when A-Rod's story broke about steroids. That's right. Just That's coming right. off the field. We were supposed to talk St. Louis yes. Cardinals offseason. I go up, and John Ants pulls me aside. He's like, hey, man. He goes, listen. <laughs> he goes, we're about to talk A-Rod yes. for the next 10 hours. He goes, I go, well, I already have my notes. I called Jason LaRue. I called all these guys from the Cardinals. They're ready. To, they gave me all this good stuff. He goes, oh, you got to bang it. <laughs> you got to bang it. He's like, he goes, and he goes, now, listen, if you can get through this show, this will be the hardest show you ever do in your career. If you can get through this show, you can get through any show. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, dude, I went on. I remember going on air initially. It was like Smoltz, somebody else, me, or it was Lighter, Lighter. Right. And I looked down. I was like, I, I have never too. done TV in my life. I have no notes. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I'm doing, dude. And all we're talking about is that interview is about to come out with Peter Gammons on A-Rod getting busted for yep. steroids. And I remember John Ants was right. It was the toughest show I ever did, and no show has ever been as tough since. Right. Well, you had a good producer <laughs> you remember that? with you. Yes, dude, I did incredible. that. I did all those. Oh, my God. Dude, that was Oof. incredible, yeah. Those things were intense, man. No, the, the worst one, the, the, I can't believe we are going down this road, but, dude, when, when the Ryan Braun stuff happened, when he went out and did that, like, oh, when he just yeah. flat-out lied, uh, in his uh, non-apology apology, well, that was the toughest show. I, that might have been the toughest show I ever had to do. Was like because we knew, quote unquote, that Braun was lying in a press conference, but Ooh. nobody in the country really did. And it was like, you know, don't forget, there's like HIPAA laws with stuff like that. That's like a blood test, urine test, like stuff like that. That's personal yeah. stuff. Yeah. And until it comes out, it's not. It's not public yeah. knowledge. Dude, that was the hardest thing ever. We had a, 
I gotta give Brian Kenny was the host. I thought it was unbelievable. It's crazy. And, anyway. and well, the problem the problem was when Braun crushed the FedEx guy that yeah, took fuck or whatever. It. The, mm. the guy that took it. Yeah, that was that was that was a bad situation. That was a whole anyway. bummer of a situation. Anyway, let's stay positive. That really right, was. That really was. That really was. <laughs> wait, who are we? Really now was. we just went down such a rabbit hole. Wait, wait we we're talking about one guy oh. you wanted to talk about tonight. Oh, wait, I want to talk about. I want to talk about. You know, we talked about the Phillies with their pitching light lining up better. Mm -hmm. Back to the World Series, Alvarez. You know, man, this guy. You know. It this might go into his favor the fact that Suarez is pitching because this guy flat out dominates lefties, dude. I mean, mm. dominates lefties. Um, let me let me get let me get the numbers here. Dude, I just had them pulled up. You got it. Get and they're, they're absolutely incredible. Like the, the the numbers of him as a lefty, uh, and then and the and the guys that are in the conversation with mm -hmm. with it are just phenomenal. Nice. Lefty versus lefty. Alvarez all time highest OPS for a left-handed pitcher versus a left-handed uh, hitter batter. No, my minimum 500 plate appearances. One Babe Ruth, mm. two Barry Bonds, three Lou Gehrig, four Jordan Alvarez, five Ted Williams. Wow, that Bro, is the greatest this list guy of all rakes time. Lefties even go back to that first series when Service is like, yeah, let me bring in the lefty to face Jordan Alvarez. I'm like. Bad idea. No, oh. because and then Rob he brings in Robbie Ray and bam, there's the three run three run walk out of home run. But like, dude, this guy crushes lefties. It's incredible how good he is, and he's also good against the breaking balls. He gets three fifty eight off him. Uh, all, all the off speed pitches, you can't really pitch this guy. And that and what he does so well against lefties, dude, is he goes to left center. That Crawford box is one nice fly ball away from being a three run bomb mm. with Alvarez there because he keeps that front shoulder in better than anyone in the game. A lot like Big Poppy used to. So I almost feel like, even though we say advantage Phillies, I almost feel like you've also now just brought uh, one of the best left handed hitters against left handed pitching into play too, mm. as far as you know that matchup yeah and not, that's match not a, that's not a matchup that's not a matchup problem for the astros lineup in the that's middle there with bregman and alvarez wonderful great point there great po dude yeah. that's a great would you yeah. where'd you get that where'd you get that note is that a full screen yeah hey. Or so? hey yeah someone just sent it to me I, oh really <laughs> no no i got it i found it on mlb mlb.com oh did you did you but did, it's still good, though. It's still great. Did, though. One it's more thing. Great. I got to say one more thing. I don't know why my memories keep jog jogging back to this. I guess because I've worked in baseball for 20 years of my life. But great, great Harold move. Harold Harold used to have this awesome line when you would put the full screen up with, like, a current yeah. player. And if a couple of the guys, you know, like Babe Ruth, his photo is going to be black and white. You know? Like, there's no right. color photo of Babe Ruth. So Harold would always be like, I always say it, man. If you can get on a board with the guys in the black and white photos... <laughs> You're doing something right, which is a really fun. It made a lot of sense, but yeah, there was this one true. day he turns. He's real tired sometimes. Every once in a while, it's like late at night, probably twelve thirty after his like ninth shift in three days. Yeah. And he turns to Amson and he goes, "Hey man, that's what I'm saying. You get the blacks and the whites together, you're doing good <laughs> things." And Amsinger just. <laughs> It was one of the very, it might have been the only time in my life where Amsinger was so speechless. He's like, we'll be right back. <laughs> we went to oh, it's so great, dude. Oh, it's yeah. so great. Anyway, so all right. Great. Wow, we got a lot out of this so far today, Sean. We, awesome. We've both been up all awesome, morning. Brother. More yeah. exciting today because we're not, nobody's sleeping upstairs. Yesterday we had to whisper. We were talking like this. I know, we were like talking like this. Like, we, got some hey. we got some compliments, though. Somebody, oh, somebody said we're, <laughs> that was a great. We're one better. Of, one of our we're fans said something uh it sounds like uh, Casey and Chinch are auditioning to be the next Batman. You know, he's always like, <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> so good, dude. Anyway, so good. Um, all right, I got one thing all for right. you. This is going to be a tease for, for Lambuski yeah. tomorrow, but I'm going to ask you first today. So yeah. I'm, I'm in first place in this one fantasy football league, and I'm crushing it. Now, this one dude who's out of it, I didn't realize this, this is like a keeper league, so you get to keep one or two yeah, players yeah. for the next year and whatever. Here's the offer I got. Nick Chubb, who's arguably the best running back in football right now for the Browns. Yeah. He's on a bye this week, but so he wanted to trade me net my next year's first round pick for Nick Chubb. I get him the, for the rest of the season. Now I'm in first place. I have Saquon Barkley. I could wind up with Barkley and Chubb, basically the two best running backs in the NFL together. Do I just, I, I got to go for the, 
you got to go for the win, right? I got to go for, to win the yeah. league this year and worry about my first round Dude, draft pick next year. Because I, I, who go, knows if go I'm going to play in this you're, league next year, right? Yes, you're in it to win championships, right? You're in it to win yes. championships. You're not in it to win it for a, a nice prospect next year or a first round pick. I know it's going to be a good one, but get Chubb, dude. Take it and go win it. Mm, I'm going for it. I'm going to pull the yeah, trigger today. I got to do it. Do it's it. Nick Chubb. He's the best. It's a no brainer. It's a no, dude. It's a and no brainer. And they're going to shoot Green Hunt today, I think. It is a no brainer. Not even a conversation. Yeah, no life. Brainer. No brainer. What, what's uh, Ken Millar always says? Like, you can't take it with you. He's in, now he's talking about money, but you can't take your fantasy yeah. league with you. I'm not taking it to next That's year. Who true. knows if I'm even going to play in this yeah. league like next year? Exactly. All right, I'm making exactly. a deal. No, no questions. Yeah, do it. Dominate that deal, bro. All right, brother. Good luck with that show today on the on the trade deadline, man. Thanks, brother. You're gonna watch if you can. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. Uh, I know. You know, I'm driving to Dayton. I'm doing. A, I'm doing a speech tonight in Dayton. Dude, you are gonna awesome. go see my you son Andrew everywhere. You are. Yeah, I got action. I got a lot of action this week, dude. Action. Yeah, and then you're flying action. tomorrow somewhere. Where are you going? Where was your then I'm flying to. I'm flying to L.A. on tomorrow, and I'm going on the. I'm going on yes. the Ed Milet podcast on yeah. Thursday. So I'm really excited about that, dude. Love Ed Milet. He's awesome. It's gonna yeah. be fun. So. And as we saw yesterday, and hey, everybody, go to our YouTube page and check out the clip we put together with Case uh, going head to head with uh, with Adam Wainwright. That at bat. We've gotten a lot of good feedback on that. If you haven't seen it yet, yeah. check yeah, it out. I'm gonna, I'll nice put, job. That's all you, Chinch. Thanks for doing that, man. That's oh, a great, dude, great clip. You got me Incredible. all excited. I, I get it very inspirational when you when you talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, buddy. All right. I love it. All right, man. Have love a great you. rest of the day, brother. You too, love man. You. Love you. See, See you. Later. Lambuski coming up tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go.